What I'm going to try to do tonight is to go through some of the the flute master. If you're not familiar with the flute master, it's a machine that does these things in the side of a bowl. And uh, this is one I was working on while I was practicing before I came down here to be sure I could do this. And uh, when I got through doing this, I got to looking at it and some of these things are crooked. So this is one I get to show everybody not to do it this way. It's, it's not a good way because it makes one bigger than the other one and it doesn't look real good when you turn it around. But that's, that's what that's for. Y'all can pass that around and look at it. I've got it marked with a black ink pen to where the ones that are bad. There was only about three or four of them, but they kind of did this. And that all comes the way you handle that flute master. Now there's two phases of this thing. It's called flute master and spiral master. The one I'm doing tonight is the flute master. It's, it's the simplest one of the two. Uh, I've spent 33 years in education and thought I knew how to learn just about anything anybody had to teach, but this spiral master is maybe more than I know how to do. <laughs> I've, I've spent a lot of time sitting in there. And it, what it does is it does the same thing as that, except it curves it up. And you just keep doing that over and over until you get it. A good spiral all the way around that thing. If y'all any of y'all went to SWAT and, and walked by Dick Weber's booth, you saw all of those things that he does, and this is where that comes from. But it's a real good tool to use if you have a lot of old wood that's not good for much else. Uh, when I say that, these are pieces of wood like this that I usually throw away. Uh, and I have an opportunity now to cut grooves in them, and this one here has got holes drilled in between the grooves. And that's new. I just did that yesterday just to show off so I could bring it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know what that was going to look like. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. But once I got it done, uh, my wife come out and said, I think I want to buy that. Oh. Well, you know what you have to say. Yeah. Well, I'll just give it to you. So, <laughs> these here are, are, are done the same way. The only thing is I use an epoxy that I get out of uh, Amazon, and it's A-P-O-X-I-E, and it comes in colors. And uh, you just drill that hole. You don't drill it out. You drill it part of the way from the outside, and then you turn the inside of the bowl after you put this in here. If you don't, you'll tear those grooves out once you start trying to turn it. So you just put this in here, you drill that hole or put the uh, flute master in there and you put that about that deep and then you just fill it with this stuff and then you come in and turn it out. And these two are done that way. Uh, it's, it's a pretty neat thing to do. Uh, gives you a little color to something you don't normally get color to. Uh, these here are a little larger, uh, and you'll notice a lot of these bigger things that I do. I got a lot of or a lot of uh, turquoise in them. Uh, I do that all, with most things. I turn, I put turquoise in it. This is mesquite, and it, and I think turquoise looks good in mesquite. Now that's just my personal opinion. Uh, and I'm the one making it, so I can do what I want to. <laughs> but that's uh, that's why I do that. That, and I think it looks real good. This bowl looks looks a lot better now than it did when I first started turning it, because it had a great big hole in it. And I finally turned that out, and it, you can still see part up down here in the bottom. But these are fun to do. That one went all the way around. This one I wanted to try something different, so I left. This side solid, this side solid, and turn the grooves on the other two. So it's just a little something different. And both of those are mesquite. This one here is a great big piece of wood. And uh, it had this hole in it, and then I have to figure out how I want to cut these so I don't mess that up. And so I just got here and then I just skipped it and came on over. 
And, and it, I thought it turned out okay. It, it, it looks all right. It looks like it fits in. So that's what this is. Uh, these are made like this. My daughter suggested this. She said, make something that we can use as a fruit bowl because it's got air that can go through it. And that's why I started making this certain type of bowl. But it's a, it's a pretty big bowl. The fruit we have is too small for that. But, but those are kind of give you an idea of what this thing is for or what I do with it. Uh, I'm going to turn, this is a piece of sycamore. I'm going to turn this real quick and then we'll try to get the flutes in there. And I'll try to do more than one kind of flute to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, what I normally do is cut all the way through. Uh, I, I like that look. Uh, some of it I just leave and it's not cut all the way through but it's, it still gives a, an appeal to that. Uh, you'll notice in, in anything I turn, I drill a hole in it right here. And I center it up and drill that hole. And I do that because it makes me feel better. Because when I put it on here, it's not just the teeth riding in that, it's in a hole. And, and I never had one of them come off of the lathe. Now before I started doing this, that happened all the time. They'd fly off that lathe. Luckily, none of them ever hit me. They always went that way. And I was sure glad. Because <laughs> I've seen people that, that uh, have been hit by these things, and they don't look very good after they get hit. They're usually down at the uh, emergency ward getting it sewed up. But uh, can I move this? Now, I would like all those bones back in case y'all was, <laughs> were interested. Just, I will count them. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I did with this thing before I came was uh, I went ahead and leveled it up, rounded it off, and put a foot on it. And... Uh, this way, I, uh, that doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it saves a little time when you're doing a demonstration if you have that already done. And what I'm going to try to do is round this off and make it to where this part of it is going to be able to accept those flutes the way I want it to. And you can do this in more than one way. When you round it, you can always go back down under it to start the flute or go to the flute and come up to the top. Or you can just make it flat on the side. Every how you want to do that. It's just something, it, it's a pr preference that you'll have when you get ready to, to do something like this. And you can, you can kind of make up your own mind about it. Now this gentleman in the front asked me how fast I run this lathe. And I told him I didn't know. So I just turn it on. And then I fiddle with it until it kind of is at the speed that I like. Uh, again, I've never had one come off. If it kind of shakes it, I, I don't really like it shaking a whole lot when I'm turning it. Sometimes I will just to smooth it out, but, but most of the time I want it to run pretty smooth. Now this is a 5 8 inch gouge. Uh, the bevel on it, and I didn't know this until I got back home because I just got back from SWAT and nearly everybody down there was talking about 40-40. I didn't know what 40-40 was when I first got there, but I heard it so many times I kind of figured out what 40-40 was. So I, when I got back home, I, I just took the <coughs> compass and I just said, I want to see what that is because I didn't know. I did, when I first started turning 
15 years ago, uh, a guy over in Arlington showed, showed me how to do it, but then he showed me how to sharpen it, it was all freehand, but he didn't tell me anything about what these are, and now I never did look it up, so. But I finally found something I liked, and it turned out to be 40. I didn't know that until the day before yesterday. So, I'm one of them 40 guys. <laughs> it's a pretty good, pretty good deal. I, If y'all have any questions while I'm doing this, I don't talk much when I'm turning because I'd kind of like to know what I'm doing. And sometimes when I'm doing it, you probably think I won't know what I'm doing, but I really do. <laughs> I, it just depends on what I want, what kind of look I'm looking at. This one here is going to be more of a bowl type shape like this. Sometimes I'll push the bottom up where it's more flat on the side. Way. Yeah, you can do either way. You just once you mark it, you just know you're going to come down across that, and there's going to be stages of it. Unless you're cutting it all the way through, there's going to be stages of it that are shallower than the other ones. Now when, I do, when I'm doing this, once I get it to here, I will completely sand this through, get it ready to finish. Because once I turn it and put it on and start working with this, then there's no going back. You can't take it back and do that anymore. So I'll finish this, I'll sand it to finish, and I'll start usually with 120 grit and go up to 320. And I'll sand it till it feels like I like it. Uh, and once I get it there, then I'll take it off and turn it around and hollow out the inside of it and do the same thing to that. And I'll finish that and then take it over to the flute master and, and start those flutes. How long has that plank been drying, Mike? Oh, I just went out there and picked this up yesterday and kind of fixed it up a little bit, but it's probably... It was a dead tree, and it's probably been in my pile out there for about five years. So it's pretty dry. It, uh, but sycamore turns real well. 
I really like it. And she bought the uh, school building, and and they had to move some of those portable buildings out, there, and they had those great big old sycamore trees about that big around, and they had to cut two of them down. And she called and wanted to know if I wanted them. And I said, well, "Let me come look at them," because I had never messed with sycamore before, so I didn't, I didn't know one way or the other. But uh, I went over and looked at him. Well, he has the biggest tree I ever saw. He was huge. Whew. Worked. <laughs> I don't think I'd get that far back there, but I think that's deep enough. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> 